target acquired. Fire. Kitten counter, kitten counter, kitten counter, kitten counter. is brought to you by Freedom Farms. We say no damn way to keeping our piggies in crates, cages or pens because we like our piggies to run free before you roast them. And welcome to the Comedy Central roast of Mr. Mike King. Yes, my friends, these are your roasters. Hmm. Look at them. The entire cast of TV3's new reality show, Averagely Funny People Who Never Quite Made It. <laughs> oh, yeah. But tonight, it's not about us, it's about the man, Mr. Mike King. I see today in the paper that Barbie have released a dole of our Prime Minister. You wind it up and for the next three years does fuck all. <laughs> Welcome to my new show which I've ingeniously entitled Mike King Tonight. Do you like the name? I mean, it wasn't my first choice for a name. Seven hours of board meetings, folks. Coming up on tonight's broadcast... You have fucked with the wrong person. You fucking jumped up, little fuckhead. Overwhelming feeling of regret. What's this, Mike? What are the trash talking? Is that the way you're going to go? You're oh, gonna... no, no, please, please, please. Just because your career's over. Making pork mince balls is something I can really get into. Mm. It bothers me how they keep the pigs, you know, <laughs> in the penis. You know. These pigs were chewing the bars. Oh, no! A life of depression and misery. I often describe it as herpes. Uh, you know, once you've got it, it always comes back. I was completely paralysed. I was dribbling down the front of my shirt. We stop having a go, amen. West Auckland, where I grew up, alcohol creates atmosphere. We look forward to that, don't we, fella? No, you don't. Why do I feel special? <laughs> Don't choke on that, fella. Yeah, you're a bit slow on that applause, folks. Never say die. Call me back if you got the fucking balls. I love pork. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike King. Michael King. Welcome on stage, brother. Thank you. Oh, Michael, in the early days of your TV career, I took you under my wing, didn't I? And helped you with your lines. <laughs> then we'd rehearse. <laughs> At that time, Michael, you were doing Game of Two Halves. Remember that one? Or in your case, Game of Two Grams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ridge, Ellis, Tony Veach, you, Devlin, two others, Coke and seven of you. Well, that's Snow White and the Seven Dorks. <laughs> And we all know who was bashful, don't we? <laughs> oh, 
Christ, then Piggate. And there was your little face, Michael, your little face on the pre-packaged pork. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Your face sitting on pork. How ironic, given the amount of pigs that have sat on your face over the last few years. <laughs> Let's keep the abuse going, shall we? Mr. Jeremy Elwood! Ladies and gentlemen, if any of you ever had any doubt with the respect that Mike has held in the comedy industry in this country, just take a look at the sad bunch of fucking has-beens, never was, and quite frankly, who the fuck are you sitting on this side of the stage? This is literally everyone in New Zealand who's still desperate enough to take his fucking phone calls, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what are the producers of this show covering their asses legally? They've hired the only people for whom name suppression's never gonna be an issue. It's going up. There is literally more hack on this stage than a $10 haircut or an evening with Clayton Weatherston. <laughs> it begins with your roast master, Willie DeWitt, or as I like to think of him, Gollum's before photo when he joins Weight Watchers. <laughs> Some of you may remember Willie from Funny Business. Most of you won't. <laughs> He's brought his sidekick, Dean Butler, yeah, what can you say about Dino? Actually, anything you want, the fuck is deaf, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> Only reason Dean's here is Meals on Wheels didn't turn up, but he thinks we're actually having a roast later on. <laughs> the woman are represented, of course, by comedians and storytellers Michelle Acourt and Jan Marie, two women who have both opened many times for Mike and occasionally done shows with him. <laughs> Jan Marie. Comedian, storyteller, thinking man's drunken regret. <laughs> this, this woman actually ended up representing the New Zealand porn industry for a while. That's like, it's like getting Jerry Brownlee to promote healthy eating. It's just... <laughs> then we have the boys, Andrew Clay and Brendan Lovegrove. Andrew Clay celebrates 20 years of live comedy this year, which means his jokes were old enough to buy him a beer two years ago. <laughs> Although, if you know Andy, you'll realise nothing around him has ever bought anyone a beer, fucking ever. <laughs> Andy is so tight that occasionally Jan borrows him to use as a spare vagina. Outside of comedy, Andrew Clay coaches girls' soccer. How did that happen? <laughs> it's like getting Joseph Fritzl to teach your kids how to play hide-and-seek. It's just not on. Uh, it's not on. Um. But Andy has somehow made it into his 40s while still looking like the boy next door. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brendan looks like the boy next door if you happen to live next to a low-rent gay maze that sells pee to the mentally disturbed. <laughs> It doesn't matter how much time he spends getting ready, Brendan always manages to look like a late-term abortion that somehow survived. <laughs> and yet still smells like one that didn't. <laughs> but we're here tonight to roast Mike King. A man who makes Paul Henry look PC, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan look mentally stable, <laughs> and Willie DeWitt look like a comedic genius. We need to go back to the beginning because it's hard to, to remember sometimes after so much crap TV, sellout commercials, public meltdowns and public confessions that at the very beginning, Mike was a fucking awful comedian. <laughs> if you've never seen Mike live before, let me save you the effort. Good night, I'm Mike, I'm Mary, that's hilarious. Woman of fuck, you look like a faggot, fuck you. Good night, that's it, <laughs> that's it. do it for three hours, bro. He does three-hour shows. Jesus, I respected you when you stood up for pigs being force-fed shit for too long in cages. Have the same respect for your audience, man. It's just... I... I preferred it when you were on the coke. It was the same jokes, but fuck, you got through it faster. You just... As we're all really tired of hearing, Mike made it famous and, you know, ended up drinking too much, smoking too much, taking too many drugs. Yeah, way to break in the cultural stereotypes, big fella. Uh, 
even with Mike's choice of drug, he just had to rub it in how much more money he was making than the rest of us. Fucking cocaine, bro. We're on party pills and bourbon. You're doing cocaine? <laughs> how many shit fridges do you have to sell to afford a cocaine habit in this country? <laughs> we can't forget the TV, though. Because if Mike was bad live, it was truly on television that how awful he was shone through. <laughs> the lowest point had to be Mike King tonight, where he tried to reinvent himself as David Letterman, forgetting the fact that David Letterman is not a talentless crack whore. <laughs> that show made Melody Rules look like fucking Seinfeld. <laughs> it, it very nearly ruined his career, except that nobody watched it. Honestly, in the end of the day, that show had fewer witnesses than the Madeleine McCann kidnapping, so you were lucky. Um... <laughs> we do love you, Mike. I mean, calling Mike a great stand-up comic is a bit like calling Tony Veach the consummate ladies' man. <laughs> is, is he in, by the way? Because there's a lot of stairs in this building. I don't want to get lost on the way out. Just, um... I'm just checking. Mike is to comedy what anal rape is to romance. <laughs> Just because some people are into it doesn't make it right. <laughs> but, in all seriousness, there's not a professional comedian in this country who would be where we are today if it hadn't been for Mike. Doing what he did, doing the way he did it, and most importantly, setting the bar so fucking low that it just looked so easy. So thank you, Mike. We love you, brother. Thinking about roasts? Enjoy a real ham this Christmas from a place that says no damn way to crates, cages and pens. Visit freedomfarms.co.nz for stockists. Ellen's been reflecting on her year. This has been uh, quite a journey for me. I feel it would be best expressed through interpretive dance. <laughs> and thinks it's time we see the true Ellen. It was called the pleasure chest or something like that. Why they put the valve in the crotch area, I don't know. Sometimes people are talking in my mind, I'm like, shut up, shut up. And then I just catch the word leotard, I'm like, what the f***? And I'm back. Ellen DeGeneres, The Beginning, next Wednesday, 8.30 on Comedy Central. No, I'm not saying there aren't perks in being a rock star. Sure, we've got the flash rides. Get right up there. Have some kick-ass houses. Less splashing, more scooping. And host some pretty epic parties. But it's hard keeping all these ladies satisfied. So this Christmas, I'm going to treat them to something real special. It's feeding time. No Leaming is number one for Christmas with a massive range of gift ideas. Give great gifts for less, like iPods, mobiles, cameras, toys, gaming and more. Our prize promise means best price is guaranteed. If you're not sure, give a gift card. First in gifts, best on price. No one but no I want to keep the vibe kind of casual fun. It can get pretty grim. That's Henry, he's the failed actor. Catering endless Hollywood shindigs. How many orgies have you worked? This is the first. But when these guys are around... One more. No, 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 no. Henry. No, no. Okay. It's always a party. Woohoo! Am I gonna die? I'm following my heart. And my heart says... <laughs> the all-new season of Party Down. We finish each other's food. I know. Tuesday on Comedy Central. What do we do? Hire a bunch of schmucks? <laughs> King is brought to you by Freedom Farms. 
We say no damn way to keeping our piggies in crates, cages or pens because we like our piggies to run free before you roast them. Ladies and gentlemen, the Comedy Central Roast of my king! <laughs> Fucking yeah! And it's the first time ever outside of the United States of America, so here's hoping the first time won't be like other first times and leave you with gravel rash and no ride home. <laughs> But then, Brennan Lovegrove is here. <laughs> so it's a distinct possibility for at least one random slapper in the room. <laughs> but I don't want to start with a wannabe, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start with a used-to-be. Willie DeWitt, a man whose career is deader than a hooker floating down the Avon. <laughs> It's great to share the stage this evening with a fellow female comedian and a good reason to give up smoking, Miss Michelle A. Court. <laughs> I like to think of Michelle not so much as a comedy a hero of mine, but more like the grand old lady of New Zealand comedy. And like most old ladies, she smells like fruitcake and wheeze. <laughs> or... <laughs> and the man who used to be on radio. Mr. Dean Butler, backstage just before he heard something out here and he said, that actually sounded quite good. And I went, if you knew what good sounded like, you'd still have a fucking job. <laughs> but now, on to the real joke. Mike King, on a good night, a man who enjoys his comedy more than the audience does. <laughs> the man with the goofy smile and the freaky teeth. The comedian you go to see when you've got three hours of your life spare and feel like a lecture. <laughs> he scaled the dizzying heights of fame in New Zealand, like getting recognised at the KFC and getting invited to an occasional gangbang at Ridgie's. <laughs> That's true! That's <laughs> I fucking true. know it's true! That's true! <laughs> Mike made the acts look amazing when he hosted Pulp Comedy. The way he said, performer, always made me think he was making everyone at home feel smarter than he was. <laughs> but you've done well for yourself. He toured Australia and many other places. He toured Australia with me last year. No expenses spared, Jenny. All the fucking motels were truck stops with cum stains on the wall. <laughs> and for a change, they weren't fucking mine. <laughs> This man had the gall to give me the fucking utu eyes when I got pork from the buffet. <laughs> so here's to you, Mike King, you mad cunt. <laughs> Wiring on about yourself since the dawn of time. You were there at the beginning for me. You gave me a lot of good tips, including one time when he was fried off his face. Sis, you gotta know when to stop burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> Mike King can fuck up everything from pork to talk shows. I know everyone tonight has made fun of the Mike King show, you know, this show that stole everything but the talent and ability to host a talk show from David Letterman. But think about this. How bad does your TV show have to be to be a black mark on Joe Cotton's career? Mike King fucks shit up. You think I'm using that term figuratively, but I'm actually using it literally. A couple of years ago in a hotel room in Melbourne, Mike King almost died taking a crap. Almost died doing something that you and I do every day. Mike King actually fucked shit up. He fucked shit up. Now I say almost because you cannot kill Mike King. You can't keep this nigga down. Now, how is it that a beloved and talented comedian like Billy T. James died from something as simple as a massive coronary failure. Mike King did a kilo of coke off a hooker's tits, then jumped on a Harley Davidson and crashed it into a tree at 180 miles an hour. He survived. Sure, the motherfucker broke his back, but he survived. You cannot kill Mike King. Mikey, congratulations on getting this roast off the ground. It's sad that budget restrictions have meant that the only comedians you have are the ones that accept barter card. I know I'm supposed to make them feel bad about their lives, but what can I possibly say that will make them feel any worse than what their wins case officers have said this week already? So instead I say, buck up, guys, eh? Things are gonna get better. Now, let's just help Mike get his career back on track so he can fuck it up in another two years, eh?
the man who did to New Zealand comedy what David Bain did to Cardigans. Dean Butler! You got it, Mikey. Thanks, uh, Willie. Cheers, everyone. Of course, uh, Willie DeWitt, uh, the roast master. I have known Willie many years. He's been called many things. Uh, Darth Vader without the helmet. Uh, Kojak's heavily retarded brother. Uh, some people have even insulted him. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy Elwood's also here tonight. Jeremy goes out with uh, Michelle at court, uh, hence Jeremy's nickname. Teagle. Yeah, because they fuck old birds too. Michelle Accord, of course, is now widely regarded as the first lady of New Zealand comedy. Uh, Jan Marie, of course, has also firmly established herself and is now widely regarded as the first slut of New Zealand comedy. <laughs> I think. Why don't you do that thing again? No, please. I think, well, you can if you want. I, I think a good gag for Jan Marie is when she's got a big cock stuck in her throat. <laughs> Jan... Speaking of uh, tits, Andrew Clay is here tonight. <laughs> and uh, Andy was trapped for 86 hours in a sunbed and got out alive. <laughs> Andy, I know you're a white man, but fuck me, the KKK would toss a coin if they saw you, fella. <laughs> Speaking of asses, Brendan Lovegrove is with us tonight, and uh, <laughs> look, I'm not saying it's an ugly panel, but Jesus Christ, you know you're in trouble when Brendan's the fucking eye candy. <laughs> but now to the man himself, Mike King. I have known Mike for many, many years, well over 15 years, and I remember the very first time I saw Mike, he was just a... A crazy buck-toothed Maori with a stupid grin. Look at him now! <laughs> so I do have to say, though, I am a bit upset that this thing is called a comedy roast. Come on, it's Mike King for fuck's sake. Surely it should be a comedy hungy, hey? <laughs> at the very least, a fucking comedy boiler! Come on! Now, I'm allowed to say that because I'm actually eighth Maori. I'm one of the few brothers on the stage tonight. And, uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Girls, can I have my uh, guitar, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mercedes. Just there, Delilah. Shine my apples in the green room, would you? Thank you. <laughs> if you can't see my guitar, it's only got one string. And uh, people say, how come your guitar's only got one string, Dino? And I say, well, if you had any less, you couldn't play it. I might as well have a... <laughs> can... I'll, uh... I'll, I'll just do it. It's gold. I'll just do a sound check for you. Sweet. <laughs> OK. This is for you, Mikey. His name is Mike King. It's quite ironic, cause he's king of the mic. It runs in his family. He's even got a gay brother called Suck. <laughs> I wonder what he's good at. His name is Mike King. By his own admission, Mike said when he was on drugs, when he was taking drugs, he was a complete fucking asshole to be around. Yeah, so what's your excuse now, pal? <laughs> Thanks, good night, have a good one. Hey, kia ora, Mikey. Hey, uh, bro, it's up uh, here. Hey, I just wanted to give you a bit of a shout-out, bro, and say thanks for being such a... <laughs> such a loyal customer, eh? You know, when I first started dealing, bro, it was only supposed to be this thing on the side, you know, a few extra bucks for the far, no way. But, bro, thanks to you, I've put all my kids through university. Uh, got a soft tail Harley, uh, whacked a pool in, <laughs> and best of all, bro, got my missus some new tits. <laughs> oh, kia ora, Mike, I love those tits. Obviously, things have been a little bit quiet over the past couple of years for you, Mikey, but uh, my door's always open for you, Mike. Well, actually, it's probably best if you just nip around the back. You know the drill. So, is that cool, guys? We're done? Yeah, that's great. That's cool. Oh, sweet ass. Oh, my gay heart, can you say? Yeah. Hey, uh, can I get you guys anything? You know, while you're here, eh? You might as well make use of it, eh, bro? You sweet? Come on, you fellas on TV. Thinking about roasts? Enjoy a real ham this Christmas from a place that says no damn way to crates, cages and pens. Visit freedomfarms.co.nz for stockists. may have been the year of the badly behaved newt presenter, but none of them compare to this guy. Oh, uh, uh, Will Ferrell. Come get a taste. 
Lays on the jam. Storming your castle on my steed, milady. Take me right now. Anchorman, Thursday at 8.30 on Comedy Central. Yay! Your favourite TV dramas, out now on Blu-ray and DVD, perfect for Christmas. Our second baby was born six weeks premature. It stopped me from working. My husband was made redundant and had trouble getting back on his feet. It was tough. We'd never had to ask for help before, but the staff at the mission didn't think twice. And even though we'll never know who donated, that Christmas, someone became our angel. Your favourite movies, out now on Blu-ray and DVD. Perfect for Christmas. Briggs and Stratton. 398. Bergen, son. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> Bargain. <laughs> Mighty 10 Nigger. No one beats us on price. Your favourite TV comedies, out now on DVD. Perfect for Christmas. It's the silly season. And Saturday Night Live is the place for frivolity. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Festivities. <laughs> Revelry. And star-studded shenanigans. Saturday Night Live. Would you like to hear some delicious gossip? Sure. I'm a virgin. Saturdays at 9.30 on Comedy Central. <laughs> the Roast of Mike King is brought to you by Freedom Farms. We say no damn way to keeping our piggies in crates, cages or pens because we like our piggies to run free before you roast them. Oh, we've got a very special woman we'd like to invite on stage now. Very funny lady. Sadly, though, the saggiest tits in New Zealand comedy. <laughs> the second saggiest tits in New Zealand comedy. She is Michelle Accord. I was, I was devastated that Will and Dino got dumped from Radio Hauraki when I, when I found that out about five minutes ago. Um, <laughs> no, Dino is absolutely, truthfully, the nicest, kindest, most respected man in New Zealand comedy, which isn't actually saying much. That's a bit like being the best-looking guy in the Burns unit. <laughs> And Jan Marie, who I love like a sister. I like to think of Jan as the Alison Holst of New Zealand comedy, always whipping out variations on the same old recipe for doing something vaguely palatable with her lump of old meat. <laughs> love you, Jan, though. And Andrew Clay. It's quite an achievement to be such a notorious rooter and still come off a bit gay. Well done, Andy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brendan Lovegrove. Brendan is, of course, in a class of his own. It's the special class for kids. <laughs> for kids who don't play well with others and can't grasp the basics of personal hygiene. <laughs> if Brendan represents the new wave of comedy, then it's the kind of wave New Zealand civil defence gets all excited about and issues a tsunami warning. Look out, this could be really big, but it turns out it's fuck all. <laughs> You heard him, Nishi. You heard him. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Elwood, uh, can I say it is always a pleasure to come after Jeremy Elwood. <laughs> but I can assure you that's not the way it happens at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the reason why we're all here tonight. Mike is an old school gentleman with many skills, not least of them is the ability to eat an apple through a tennis racket. <laughs> always impressed me that a man with teeth like that has chosen a career which requires him to keep his mouth open all the time. <laughs> I always remember one of the reviews we got for our Melbourne show in 1997. There is a thread of implied violence and lack of awareness in King's Act which makes it very difficult to laugh at this show. <laughs> Mike wanted to smash her in the face. <laughs> And then he met her and he told everyone he didn't need to smash her in the face because God already had. <laughs> I thought I knew Mike really well, but I was genuinely shocked when I found out he'd had a cocaine addiction because he never fucking shared. <laughs> that, that is 
is as disappointing as spending an evening with Clay without him hitting on you. At some level, that's just rude. <laughs> it is fantastic to have you back, Mike. Lord knows we can always do with a sober driver. And fundamentally, you're still the same belligerent, bullying cunt. <laughs> I owe my career to Mike and his support all those years ago, and he continues to inspire my work in different ways, uh, and I'd like now to show you one of them. <clears throat> Welcome to Telecom. To help me direct you to the right place, please say a few words or just ask a question. Alternatively, to leave a message for your little wee fucked up friend, press one. <laughs> if you are fucking with the wrong person, press two. <laughs> To let him fucking listen to this too, you cock-sucking cunt, <laughs> press three. If you have fucked with the wrong fucking person, you fucking jumped up little fuckhead, <laughs> press four. <laughs> to call me back, if you've got the fucking balls, <laughs> press the hash key. <laughs> Mike King, what can we talk about him? Uh, he was the co-host of that TV show we had. What an asshole, you know? Always late, stoned, he's stoned on the set. I can't say that, can I? Nah, you'll cut that out, right? Yeah. He's, he's a nice guy, yeah. Uh, he's good looking, you know, those teeth of his. I don't know if you ever got those fucking teeth fixed. Just don't, don't talk about the teeth. What? We'll just cut that later. We'll cut that? Yeah. Yeah. He owes me money. He owes me money. Yeah. I lent him some really good drugs. Never paid me back. Bastard. So we can just cut that. Yeah, we'll cut that. Did I think it? it's great that he was like a uh, a co-host to a puppet show. Yeah. A fucking puppet show. Oh god. Thinking about roasts? Enjoy a real ham this Christmas from a place that says no damn way to crates, cages and pens. Visit freedomfarms.co.nz for stockers. A man who has seen the things I've seen. Oh, God, steroid! Experienced the loss and pain that I've experienced. I transcend race, hombre. I kind of consider myself like a retired gunfighter. The biggest comeback celebration any y'all have ever seen. Even though you're Mexican, you seem normal. As a responsible broadcaster, Sky complies with the Broadcasting Code of Practice. If you feel standards have been breached, you can make a formal complaint either in writing or by going to the complaints page on the Sky website. You will need to state the name of the program, the date and time it aired, and the standard that you believe has been breached. Send complaints to this address or online. Our website address is skytv.co.nz. Complaints must be made within 20 days of the program's transmission. been reflecting on her year. This has been uh, quite a journey for me. I feel it would be best expressed through interpretive dance. <laughs> 
Perhaps it's time we see the true Ellen. It was called the pleasure chest or something like that. Why they put the valve in the crotch area, I don't know. Sometimes people are talking in my mind, I'm like, shut up, shut up. And then I just catch the word leotard, I'm like, what the f***, and I'm back. Ellen DeGeneres, The Beginning, next Wednesday, 8.30 on Comedy Central. <laughs> the Roast of My King is brought to you by Freedom Farms. We say no damn way to keeping our piggies in crates, cages or pens because we like our piggies to run free before you roast them. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey uh, and, and the team, I'd love to be there, mate, to celebrate you and your fading career. You know, wave goodbyes, you shuffle off this mortal coil, you know, maybe feed you some mashed up food via your depressed, stroke-ravaged face. But sort of got my own TV show on, pretty successful with old Paul, Paul here, Paul Ego, Paul. I don't want anything to do with this, mate. I don't even know the guy. But you've had a good run, Mike. You've had a bloody good run on the old TV. Comedy Central, Game of Two Halves, Strassman, TV bloopers and practical jokes and that. Actually, that's not that good a run when you, a run when you really, say it like that. Is it? Like that, collectively, mate. Guess who's coming to dinner? That was a bit not shit so in New Zealand, you, wasn't it? You know, our celebrities. <laughs> even when they were there, you still had to guess. Yeah. <laughs> Bet you got mistaken for old Billy T. James a couple of times. Still, you know, here it is. You've been described as one of New Zealand's top comedians, which just goes to show, you know, you've learned how to change things on Wikipedia. Good man. <laughs> Outside of, you know, your professional career, which has been great, you're a great family man. You know, the odd son that makes a bit of a rapey video. Does not a bad dad make. No, no. There's not one rapey video. Plus, he can't judge. I might cut down the um, tree on One Tree Hill there, didn't you're he? You're going to go and cut down trees of what significance. What a hypocrite, Mike. Yeah, bit of a hypocrite. Uh, I hope this cheers you up, though, uh, Mike. Because, uh, to be honest, I'm a bit sick of you making the papers with your dumb antics. You know, you're very good at, uh, your, oh, pigs are human too. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, you're very good at it. You know, when I read Mike King has stroke in bathroom, I thought they were doing a story about you rubbing one out in the loo. Well, they're covering even that now. <laughs> oh, you know the latest, don't you? What is it? He's depressed. Is he? What's he got to be depressed about? Nothing. It's a scam, mate. It's all about the foreshore and seabed. Because everyone knows, you know, the depressed have rights to the beach for their little stick riding. Oh, their names for in the sand. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Possession 19th of the law. That'd be right. You know, he's married. He's not. He is. Is he? Yep. <laughs> I'm liking this guy less and less. Yeah. Not so much a roast, more of a hungy. Come on. Let's stop this bullshit. Let's make something people actually watch. Come on, guys. Okay. See you, Mark. <laughs> And now our last roast before Mr. King has the right of reply. Nicknamed the human tampon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Andrew's motto, if it's got a front bum, I'll fuck it. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Clay. Taking a lot of uh, shit tonight about how many women I sleep, but that's a long time ago. Uh, and it's that whole thing, you know, you fuck one netball team and... <laughs> a week and suddenly you're a male slut. It is however great to see my old friend uh, Dean Butler here uh, tonight because um, I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and watching him perform tonight I'm not 100% sure that he's not. Uh, <laughs> Lovegrove is here, although the only way to get Lovegrove to turn up was to tell him the show was about him. Uh, <laughs> But of course, when he saw this many people turn up, he knew that wasn't the case. <laughs> Always lovely to see Jan Marie. And of course, with Jan's history of getting her bits out publicly, uh, her being here improves the chances of Lovegrove not being the only cunt you'll see on stage. <laughs> I'm kidding, Jan's the girl next door to, to the brothel. <laughs> I'm not really kidding about Lovegrove being a cunt, though. No. Uh, <laughs> As you know from tonight that um, Jeremy goes out with another one of our esteemed roasters, Michelle A. Court. Of course, there is a small age uh, difference between them. <laughs> Actually, I remember Michelle telling me um, about the very first time she, she met Jeremy. Um, she was telling me a very cute story. She, uh, she went up to him and she went, um, kitchy, kitchy, kitchy. Oh, kitchy, 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 kitchy. Kitchy, kitchy, kitchy. <laughs> Which leads us to Mike. Mike talks a lot about depression, but if you really want to find out uh, about depression, um, you should have talked to Mike's drug dealer when he found out Mike was going off the drugs. <laughs> now, that guy was fucking traumatised, I tell you. Uh, in tears, as was the whole Northland economy. 
I actually I remember sitting there one day with uh, with Mike. Um, he said he'd smoked a few joints. He snorted some coke, did a couple of dozen beers, did some speed, some I think some opium, some animal nitrate. I'm not sure. <laughs> And we were sitting there talking away, and we couldn't for the life of us work out what was causing his depression and violent mood swings. Uh, <laughs> what was it? What was it that was fucking him up, we wondered. And of course, after Mike's epiphany, we got off the drugs. Every time you saw Mike as a friend, he'd fascinate you by telling you how many days in a row he'd been clean. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, he never told me how many days in a row he was fucked up. Now that I would have found interesting. <laughs> you may ask, with all the shit we've thrown at Mike tonight, is there anything good at all about the man? Well, of course there is. His lovely wife, Rose, without whom he wouldn't have had a fucking act. <laughs> Alex, his youngest daughter, is my goddaughter. Uh, that's right, Mike made me uh, the godfather of his youngest kid, which gives you some idea exactly how fucked up on drugs he was at the time. <laughs> uh, Alex is my goddaughter, so therefore, traditionally, I'm responsible for her moral and spiritual guidance. Uh, I have to say, her pole dancing's going fucking magic at the moment. <laughs> Of course, Mike wasn't always the confident, some say arrogant person you see before you now because as a youngster he was often teased because of the absolutely fucking enormous mouthful of teeth the man has. <laughs> Jesus, look at those fuckers. And of course there was the taunts as a kid, they were so ugly, you know, hey, hey piano mouth, oh, hey fence face, why don't you get something to, you know, take the attention away from your mouth like all oh, the South Island. <laughs> yes, my friends, parents were a lot harsher back in the 70s. <laughs> But Mike rose above that all, and when he was capable of growing facial hair, which is about the age of 24, he grew his now signature moustache to distract focus from his huge teeth. I myself try to go large amounts of pubic hair for the same reason, if you follow. That's right, I, I, I do that to distract from Mike's teeth, it's weird. Um, you may ask, where did Mike get all the confidence and ability to speak so well publicly? Well, of course, it's part of Maori culture for young men to practice their public speaking in a public forum. And, and Mike was no different. Every week he was up there, oh, your honor, on the night of the incident in question. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, led one night to Mike, as has been said, getting up at Kitty O'Brien's in Auckland 1994, the comedy venue at the time, and doing his first ever proper stand-up gig. From there, he's very much followed in the footsteps of his hero, Billy T. James. Except, of course, everyone Everyone liked Billy T. James. <laughs> so here's to you, Mike. You put the tongue back into tongue of Dufenewa, you put the fuck back into fucker papa, and for that we love you. Thinking about roasts? Enjoy a real ham this Christmas from a place that says no damn way to crates, cages, and pens. Visit freedomfarms.co.nz for stockists. Hold on to something. Your Fridays. Let's dance. Just got a whole heck of a lot. Grosser. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy good old fashioned family. Well, a hell with all of you. Fun. Das Pool. And futuristic. Duh. Foibles. I'll show her who's immature. Futurama and Family Guy. Goody, 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 goody. Friday at 8 on Comedy Central. Stupid dog. State Insurance have created a brand new policy for all those people who just want to insure their few favourite things. It's called the State Favourite Things Policy and it might be just what you need. Call 0800 for State to find out more. Two countries, worlds apart, yet both sharing a protective passion for their natural, unspoiled environments. Small wonder, then, that New Zealand has embraced the Scandinavian excellence of environmentally responsible ASCO appliances, designed specifically not to waste our precious water or electricity, to minimize detergent usage, and to be incredibly quiet. ASCO, making a world of difference to our world from award appliances. No Leaming is number one for Christmas with a massive range of gift ideas. Give great gifts for less, like iPods, mobiles, cameras, toys, gaming and more. Our prize promise means best price is guaranteed. If you're not sure, give a gift card. First in gifts, best on price. No one but no Show us you Brits. <laughs> no way. It's <laughs> brilliant. 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 Gives you an extra large helping. Oh, yeah. Of good, solid, and reliable. Laughter is compulsory. British Sunday Fair. 
Did you look over her shoulder at you, so like this? Oh, Harry Enfield and Chums. Oh, he certainly is a comical nuts case. Skellywagger. Listen, listen, my, my wife's gone into labour and my phone's died. Can I borrow your phone? Shh. Yeah. Quick, quick. yeah you... Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should see your face on this, love. And Katie Brain's big ass show. I'm excited. Are you excited? Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I am excited. Can you tell me what this is about? Show us your grits. Personally, I think it's a load of bollocks. Sunday from 7.30 on Comedy Central. Now off it! My King is brought to you by Freedom Farms. We say no damn way to keeping our piggies in crates, cages or pens, because we like our piggies to run free before you roast them. The new Mike King. Let's just go through it, shall we? Unbeknownst to you all, and I didn't know this either, that Mike is regularly and still does and is going on Sunday off to perform for the troops in Afghanistan at his own cost. <laughs> the same Mike King that's raised awareness for mental health. The same Mike King that's overcome the drug and alcohol addictions that, that he's had. <laughs> Many years ago, of course, um, Mike's daughter comes home from school and uh, she's looking all disheveled and upset. Mike goes, oh, what happened? And she goes, oh, well, I came out of school and there was a man, he came up to me. And Mike goes, oh, and then what happened? And she goes, well, he offered me some lollies. Eh, bro. And Mike goes, oh, what happened? What happened then? Well, I said no, and then he offered me a ride in the car. And Mike goes, oh, what happened? He says, well, uh, then he, he tried to kiss me in the bushes. Oh, Mike goes, no, and then what happened? He tried to jump on me, and Mike goes, oh, no, what happened? And then she says, well, nothing, because a man came around the corner with his dog. And Mike goes, oh, I will make something up. Make, <laughs> make something up. <laughs> Damn it. Michael, I love you, mate. You're a genuine legend. It is my honor to welcome you to stage. The man himself, the right of reply, Mr. Mike King. Kia ora whanau, kia ora whanaunga. Man, before I start, could I just say uh, what an absolute privilege and pleasure it is to be the first man outside the United States to be granted a genuine Comedy Central roast. Yeah. Man. My heart is full. My heart is full. Of course, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm not under any illusions that the reason I was chosen was because of any particular talent I might have and probably more to do with the lack of talent that I've been surrounded by for the last 15 years. I mean, come on. Just look at this. Look at this stunning array of comedy mediocrity that they've lined up for you tonight. Look at them. Willie DeWitt. Jeremy. Jeremy Elwood, Andrew Clay, Jam Marie. What's your name? <laughs> Dean But. How's the pudding? <laughs> I, I know a lot of middle-aged men out there will be, be looking up here at this um, wasteland of nobodies. <laughs> and you'll be looking at Michelle A. Court and you'll be going, hmm. Now, there's a familiar face. Where have I seen that face before? That was a face we used to jizz on back in the 70s <laughs> when she was the host of what now? 
And if I'm being brutally honest, when Jeremy's away, some of us still do. <laughs> Of course, as I look at you, Missy, I see there's a lot more of you to jizz on nowadays. <laughs> Jan Marie, I love you, Janny, man. We, 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 we've toured together, we've done everything, eh, man? We, we, you know. Jan Marie sucks so much cock, if the sperm bank ran out of cum, she'd just have to go down there, cough, it'll be full again. <laughs> The only thing bigger than Jan Marie's mouth is her vagina. <laughs> her vagina is so big, the first time her man Rick went in there, he needed crampons and ice pick and a Sherpa so he wouldn't get lost. <laughs> I say that with love. <laughs> I say that with love. Willie DeWitt, ladies and gentlemen, the oldest man in comedy. He taught me everything there is to know about the television business. I went around his house, he took me into the shed. In under two minutes, the guy was on his knees giving me a blowjob. <laughs> Being the young, naive Māori boy that I was, I had no idea where to put my hands. <clears throat> I said, Willie, what the hell are you doing? He goes, Mikey, 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 if you want to make it in the television business, you got to learn how to suck a dick. <laughs> Let me tell you, without any embarrassment, no one sucks a dick like Willie DeWitt. <laughs> he went at my dick like Millie Holmes go at a pee pipe. That's how. <laughs> I came, I came so hard that day, I blew all the hair off the top of his head and it's never come back. I love you, Willie. You're the man, brother. You're the man. Give it up for Jeremy Owen. Come on, he was brilliant tonight. <laughs> he was brilliant tonight. Jeremy Alwood. Jeremy. See, how, how, how would I describe you, Jeremy? I would describe Jeremy Alwood as the Brian Adams of New Zealand comedy. Anyone who knows music knows that Brian Adams is one of the great singer-songwriters of his era. But I would rather smash my cock with a hammer <laughs> Then go out and see him. <laughs> As I was watching the most arrogant comedian in New Zealand history, Brendan Lovegrove, <laughs> strutting around the stage, swinging his little dick, <laughs> I thought, what is, what is the most hurtful thing I can say to the world's most arrogant man? And then it came to me. Andrew Clay, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Andrew Clay. <laughs> Give it up for Andrew Clay. You were funny tonight. You were funny tonight, man. Jesus, we, like, we were all shocked. <laughs> no, 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 serious, man. Because, like, you know, everyone in the comedy game knows that Andrew Clay is just brilliant live, but you put a camera in front of him, he's like Tommy Coffee at a pussy eating contest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, me and Andy, we go way back. I met Andrew Clay in 1994. We toured, eh, bro? We did the first ever stand-up tour to all the provinces in New Zealand. We went to all the big places, eh, bro? We went to, we went to Whakatane, we went to <laughs> Matata, Matata, we went to Stratford. Man, on that tour, we played more shitholes than Brendan Lovegrove's cock, didn't we, bro? <laughs> For me, that was the beginning of my career. For, for Andrew, that was the highlight. <laughs> he is the godfather of my daughter. He actually thinks that I made him the godfather because, you know, out of love and respect, fuck that. <laughs> Only reason I made you the godfather is so you wouldn't hit on her before she left school. <laughs> You know, folks, I've been doing, uh, doing comedy for, for 17 years now, and um, I've played audiences from all over the world, but of all the audiences I've ever performed for, you guys have been the most recent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for all our roasters. Your MC extraordinaire, Mr. Willie DeWitt. The lovable.
Michelle Aiko, Dean Butler, Jan Marie, and the very beautiful Mr. Jeremy Alwood. And ladies and gentlemen, the man of the night, Mr. Mike King. This has been a Two Heads production for Comedy Central. I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. This is a robbery! Royale with cheese. That's a tasty burger. In the fifth, your ass goes down. Did you order a $5 shake? Oh, oh, no, no. I'm not doing it. Do it. That was trippy. Are we in danger? Yes. Where's my watch? Then I wore this up my ass for two years. Mother.